Bentwood Ring Supplies sent me this awesome box full of ring making supplies. And I'm going to show you everything I got along with how to make some cool rings using it. So let's get started. So first up are these interesting looking ring blanks. These are all actually 3D printed using a UV resin. And these are what I'm going to be making the rings in this video out of. And they sent me an absolute ton of these and I'll have plenty of them to work with. There's also a 3D printed finger ring sizer that matches up perfectly with the Pepe Tools mandrel. Some stainless steel ring blanks, which I've never actually used before. So these are a very handy tool for ring making. They're finger savers. Basically they'll hold your ring for you so you can polish the inside of it. There's also these little containers that have materials for inlays, like small watch gears and shards of mastodon tooth. They also included some of this Dacryland stuff that I really like the look of. And if you saw the thumbnail, I'm going to be using it in this video. There was also some clear Aluma UV resin, along with some opaque colored resins. And last but not least are some wood pieces. These are blanks that are from a whiskey barrel and a bunch of different veneers. But as you can tell, an absolute ton of stuff that I'm going to be able to use for multiple videos. But in this video, I'm pretty much just going to focus on the resin rings. Let me know in the comments what you would like to see me do with all of this stuff next. All of the resin rings are labeled with what size they should be, but you'll find if you measure it, it'll be about two sizes too small. This is so you can widen out the center and add whatever profile you want to it. And that's where these finger saver things come in. All you need to do is find one that will fit your ring inside of it. So basically something like this, and then you can attach this end to a drill. But my drill is absolutely terrible for that, so I'm going to use my lathe, which is going to make things a lot faster and easier. I'm also going to need some sandpaper. I'm going to start with 150, even though 80 grit is suggested for starting. And once I work my way through all the grits, I can make everything nice and smooth using these micro meshes before polishing. The cool thing with the sandpaper is you can just rip off what you need. And each roll is about 20 feet of sandpaper and I use about half an inch at a time. So on the lathe, I'm going to add some water to the ring, seeing that we're going to be wet sanding it. This will keep the dust that you make from sanding down, along with helping your sandpaper not get clogged. And all we're really doing here is shaping and sanding out the inside of the ring. You will have to stop every so often to check the size of the ring and make sure that you're not making it too big. You should also remove the ring and flip it over every so often, just so the inside of your ring doesn't become lopsided. But with all of that being done, and this being the right size now, it should look something like this. And keep in mind that I only used the 150 grit sandpaper on this so far. And if you really want to be sure on the sizing, you could just put it onto your ring mandrel. Speaking of mandrels, I'll be using this expandable one to hold the ring so I can work on it. And then I'll put all of this into this little 3D printed stand to make it easier to work with and so it's elevated the entire time. You can also turn it using this. For the inlay I'm going to be using some black emerald opal along with some thin CA glue. So both the opal and the glue did not come in the box that I got in this video, but they are what I normally use for making my inlay rings. So I wanted to see how they would hold up and work with the resin ring core. And so far so good, but now I need to cure this glue. And I'm just going to do that using some spray on accelerator. This basically just causes a chemical reaction with the glue and makes it harden right away. And with everything completely hardened, I can start shaping this with some 120 grit sandpaper, just like I did on the inside. And like before, make sure to use water when doing this, seeing that this will clog up your sandpaper really quick if you don't. And make sure you check it every so often so you can see when all the glue is gone so you can switch to the finer and finer grits of sandpaper. And if you want to, you can use a sanding stick and it makes everything a lot easier and it keeps things more uniform than just using your fingers and holding the paper. But either way it will work. At this point, you can spray some water on it and you can see what it would look like if it had a full polish. And I think this looks really good with the pattern, the opals, and the black band. But let's actually finish polishing this up. So even going through all the sandpapers and the micro meshes, you're still going to have a kind of matte finish. And this is where some plastic polish is going to come in really handy. And all I'm going to do is put a little bit onto a microfiber cloth and touch it to the ring as it's spinning. And after about a minute or so, you'll have a nice high polish. As for the inlay itself, it looks pretty good, but there are a couple places I need to touch up by adding some more CA glue, but I'll do this later. But for now, I'm going to clean up the inside of the ring using the same method I did on the outside, and everything should have a, a nice high polish when I'm done. And with this ring pretty much done, we can move on to a different style of ring, which is the dragon scale one. And I'm going to fill all the different scales with a different color of resin. So just like the other ring, we need to remove some material from the inside of this band to make it the right size. But I'm going to be using a add-on to my lathe that I can attach a boring bar to that allows me to remove material much faster and much more consistent. And if you have a lathe, a quick change setup like this is pretty much a must. 
So just in a couple passes, you can have it exactly to the right size, but it will leave a straight hole through your ring, which isn't very comfortable because it's a kind of sharp edge. So once you get it to the right size, you can use a little bit of sandpaper and just touch the edges a bit, and it should round them off and make everything comfortable. And with that done, the ring goes back onto my expandable mandrel setup so I can add resin to it. I'm doing this by adding a little bit layer by layer and spreading it around using a toothpick. You do have to worry about air bubbles in your resin, so ways to avoid this is to heat it using a heat gun. This will help thin out the resin and allow the bubbles to escape. I'm also going to be curing each layer using a UV flashlight. So even adding the resin from the little squeeze bottle can add air bubbles. So if you have something that you can put this onto and then pick it up using your toothpick, it will help eliminate as many bubbles as possible. And bubbles aren't the end of the world. Seeing if you do get them, you can use something sharp or a small drill bit to open them up and then fill them in with resin, re-cure it, sand it all down, and you should be good to go. But it just takes a little bit more time, which we want to avoid. But anyways, once I have all the scales filled in with resin, I need to do a full cure on this, seeing that the flashlight won't really cure this all the way through and it'll still be tacky or soft. I'm just going to throw it into my curing setup for about 10 minutes and check on it and see if it's still tacky and leave it in longer if it is. And if you don't have one of these, you can just leave it in direct sunlight for a while. And with it all cured, it's going back on the lathe and it will go through the same process as the other ring, which is just sanding it down and shaping it and then polishing it up using some of the plastic polish. And for the last ring, I'm going to be using some diker lamb. And I'm going to be putting it into the segmented ring blank. All that I really need to do is test fit it and then cut it to length. And this stuff is extremely flexible and very easy to cut with just normal scissors. There is an adhesive backing on this too, so you can just stick it to the ring to keep it in place. I'm just going to use some sharp tweezers to push everything into place, and then repeat this until the ring is full of this material. And to cover all this, I'm going to be using some Aluma UV. And using a toothpick, I'm just going to apply it layer by layer slowly and cure each layer until everything is completely filled. And doing this honestly doesn't take that much time at all. You just want to make sure that you spread everything around equally and you don't get any large bubbles in there. And with all the clear resin built up to my liking, I'm going to put this on the lathe and do exactly what I did with the other rings to clean it up and shape it. So here it is all completely cleaned up and I think it came out really nice. And I really think the black of the ring makes the diker lamb really pop in this, along with the pretty much glass-like finish. And there's going to be a lot of ways to mix and match all these materials to make unique rings. So if you'd like to try to make some rings like this for yourself, I will have a link to the description to everything I used in this video. And don't forget to check out Bentwood Ring Supplies to get your own resin ring cores, along with other materials. And I'd also like to thank them for sending over the box that they did so I can make this video. So that's about it for this video. If you found it to be helpful, leave a like. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave a comment. Also, thank you to all my Patreon supporters for supporting my channel. And for more helpful videos like this one, subscribe to my channel. Well, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!